Okay, there you go. Thanks for having me. All right, y'all. It's Kevin Lacey here from a TV show, Airplane Repo on Discovery Channel. Uh, right now, what you got me doing here is some repairs to the Stenson here that, uh, to the side of the fuselage. It encountered some battle damage last summer at uh, one of the last air shows. Actually, it was last fall. And in case you don't know about the Stenson, the uh, aircraft is covered with fabric. And the fabric on this particular aircraft now is, uh, is a polyfiber. Uh, it's a process with a vinyl based type of a fabric and it is a fabric it really is uh, The old days they covered them with cotton grade-a cotton and what have you. This is the fabric right here The airplane had five holes in the side of it and in order to fix the holes I have to sand the paint all the way down to the bare fabric the underlying original coat Give myself two inches on either side of the damage area and then fabricate a repair make a patch out of the same fabric using original fabric, a pair of pink and shears that really do a nice job. Look at this. Make a nice little pink cut right here. The purpose of the pink is so that the fabric doesn't have a tendency to, to unravel itself. It will stop when it gets to the next pink. But at any rate, this is what you do to make your initial patch. First you do is you sand it out the area you need, giving yourself about two inches of margin all the way around the damaged area. Fabricate a patch by cutting up some raw materials. Get your patch all situated. This handy dandy glue here called Polytac. Go ahead and glue your patch on there. It's a really good cement for fabric. Glue your patch into place. Once the patch is in place, then you will want to let it set up and dry for overnight. Then you will come back and we'll start applying a dope, which is a poly brush in this case. And this poly brush has a little bit of a red tint to it. The red tint is so that you can tell where you've actually brushed this on. Otherwise, if it was clear, you'd just be painting over the same place you've been already and wasting dope and not getting the full coverage on what you're working on. Once you've applied a few cross coats of that, and when I say cross coats, one coat this way, the next coat this way. Once you've done that, then let it set, sand some of the imperfections out, and then come back to it again. Once you've got that situated the way you need it with about two or three coats on there, it's time to come back with poly spray. This is very much similar to the poly brush that you put on there, except it's not tinted red. This actually has, uh, well, I was told there's aluminum oxide pigments in here, uh, but it gives it a silver color. And the silver color is to protect from ultraviolet uh, rays and protect the fabric underneath. With the... Uh, it also provides you a possibility to help build up areas where you need to build up. So if that, that works pretty good. Now, once this is all done, this requires a lot of sanding. So if elbow grease isn't your thing, call somebody else. We were gonna have somebody else do the job here, but uh, due to the climate, the weather conditions, their projects that were in their shop were real slow to get out. And when I say their projects were slow to get out. This stuff is temperature and humidity sensitive. We had a pretty cold winter in case Al Gore wasn't aware of that. Uh, and so cold temperatures are not real good for this, doing this type of work. Neither is high humidity. High humidity will oftentimes cause it to blush. Uh, blushing is where uh, moisture in the air, for example, will get caught up into the paint as you're spraying it, the dopes as you're laying them on the airplane, and has a tendency to uh, in the the finish that you're putting on there with micro fungicidal growth underneath if you will for back lack of better terms uh, and it really doesn't it's not real good for your for your for your finished product so in any case I've been spending a lot of time on the sandpaper here and it's about time for me to go mix up some paint which case is going to be an aerothane and this is a three-part polyurethane type paint where you use a, a catalyst, you mix it up, put a catalyst in there, you come back with some reducer, back it all off, give it a little bit of time in the cup to flash. Once it's all flashed out and ready to go, then you come back and you spray it on. You start out spraying three coats. Uh, well, you start out spraying a light tack coat, 
lay that tack coat down and you come back after about 15 minutes and lay another coat a little wetter and then the final coat comes in at full tilt boogie and you blow it on there. Uh, you're giving it about 20, 15, 20 minutes between each shot. With any luck, we'll have a really nice looking finish on the side of the airplane. But once I'm done with the blue, I will peel off a lot of the other paint on here, or a lot of the other tape on here, and then I'll come back and lay out the yellow stripes on here. I'll probably wait tomorrow or two days to do that because uh, just to let the new paint and the new finish have a chance to set itself up. So, at any rate, with, uh, with all that said and done, I think the sanding is all done. The airplane's ready to go. I'm going to start painting. So if you give me a few minutes, I'll come and turn this back on just about the time it's ready to go. Alrighty now. We're back. Gun in hand, ready to go. Keep in mind, the finish you get is only going to be as good as the effort you put into it beforehand. You paint job, no matter how good you are with a spray gun, to do a lousy job of prep, you're going to get a lousy paint job. So I'm going to lay my first tack coat on here right now. See how it comes out. Pardon the noise, it's a little loud. I turn on an exhaust fan. I'm going to be a little bit muffled because I got my got my uh, respirator on. This is not my good one, but I'm not at Aero Country. Don't have a chance to get my good one. I'm only spraying a small area, so this will work for now. Uh, with respect to the paint can, now this is kind of interesting. Uh, the nozzle. Right now I've got it set up to fan this way, so I will be fanning this way. And as I go, I'm only spraying a tack coat, but I'm going to cover one layer. I will come back and I will pick up about a quarter of what I just shot and then shoot that part and then keep working the way down as I go. All right, here goes nothing. So, my paint kind of dripping just a little bit, but that's not that unusual for me. My clip is usually uh, pretty beat up, but it sprays good. We're going to let this sit here now for about 20 minutes. We're going to come back and we're going to fix it up with another coat. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to find a rag wrapped around the neck of my paint gun. Because I need to really dig the gas But, we'll be back with you in a few minutes to show you how this works out. Alrighty boys and girls, here we go. It's time for coat number two. This is going to be a reasonably decent wet coat here. So I've made a little diaper for my paint can, so hopefully it won't drip paint everywhere. Uh, you yeah. know, just wish I took better care of my stuff, but whatever. Here we go.
As you can see, the project's starting to take shape here, man. It's starting to look really good. I'm really proud of how it's working out so far. Uh, we'll be back in about another 20 minutes. Lay the final coat on. The next step will be to get the borderline tapes off uh, so that our edges will stay clean and crisp. And once we do that, then the next step will be to lay out the stripes for the uh, yellow. In the meantime, I'll be back in about 20 minutes. Adios. Girls, here we go again. This is the third and final round of uh, applying the blue finish on the very Stinson here. Uh, I don't know what, since I can't see what this GoPro is seeing, I don't have any idea what you're seeing. But the second coat is pulled out nicely and it's time to lay the third and final wet coat on here. Uh, again, I will try to overlap all my coats. I will go a little slower this time than I did previously because this is the third and final coat. Hopefully I did enough preparation work in, in uh, setting up for this shoot. And at the end of the day, the repairs that we did will not even be visible. We'll see what happens. Here we go. Wish me luck. Back into the loop here when I start to feel the 